welcome, welcome, welcome to Closer Cult Podcast. I'm your host, Alma Merrill. Today, I have my dear, close friend. I know I say that about everybody, but this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rick Bentley. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? This is an exciting time to be here with Alma Merrill. I'm super pumped. <laughs> Appreciate the invite, Alma. Heck yeah, brother. Yeah. Fun to have you on. Uh, yes, Rick and I have known each other for a long, long time. Long time, my friend. And uh, so Rick's over at uh, Coldwell Banker. Yes, sir. And uh, we met each other over at um, Century 21. Yeah, great place, great time. That was awesome, wasn't it? It was an amazing time over there. We learned a lot, got a lot of good people, good friends. Love a lot of people over there. It's just, you know what, there's a, there's a new river to float almost daily. Yep. Right. So it's it's just interesting how... I love, I love how you put that, a well, new river to well, float. Well, it's just, look, you 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 get in this river, you you find good things, and you paddle, and it becomes no longer a challenge or, or, or new horizons to climb. And, you know, you just find these good opportunities that come along. And, you know, we, we love our time over there. Love our people over oh, there. Yeah, They're, definitely. love them people. They're amazing. That's the, that was the best part of it. Yeah. Those, it, those family, people, right? The family. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, the leadership over there is incredible. But there becomes that time where opportunity just presents itself. Yeah. And I think there's a, I think there's a, a time for everything. Yeah. That's why it's like really fascinating, Alma, that... And I was thinking of you, and out of the blue, you text me. <laughs> That's wild how it always happens. Because <laughs> uh, I'm driving to work, and I'm like, I'm in the way out into my office, and and I'm like, I'm not even planning on doing a podcast today. I have yeah. several of them in the queue, like, and I'm just like, you pop in my mind, and I'm like, oh man, I got it. I got to see if he can be on today. Yeah. Like I've been, I've had you on my list, and it just happened. So I guess we're just doing a podcast today. You know, <laughs> well, well, you know, and there's there's obviously obviously something that has to be said. Yeah. The universe speaks, we have to listen, right? Yeah. And so I don't think things happen for no reason. No. I think when we're tapped into each other and, and different people around the globe, we should, you know, sometimes turn off the radio and listen to that silence and listen to that energy coming in from wherever it may be. Right. Whatever the bigger picture is from you, it provides this connection that really lights up your soul. Yes. And we have to be listening to that. And I think it's fascinating. If we do that slow down, um, man, the universe will show up for us. Yeah. You know, I have a big, big belief. What though. does that mean to you, like the universe will show up? Well, well here, here's what I mean. I, I believe that we, as a species, are, are here for a reason. When, and, and think about it, it's pretty simple. And it's how to, how to deal with humankind. Um, think about everything we do in life is to serve another human being. But I think it's fascinating that not a whole lot has figured that out. How important that is that? It, how, how important is that? Because, you know, everybody's like, what's the purpose of life? That's right? it. And it's super simple. Einstein sta stated, we're here to serve mankind. And, you know, I, and I've taken a little bit deeper. If you think about everything we do, drive up windows at McDonald's or Wendy's, whatever your, your poison is there, right. is, is, you know, it's serving another human being. And we're in a world that is such a quick fix that we get angry if it's not done right. We're so impatient. I, it, we're getting deep already. And, yeah. and, I, and I'm so glad. That's what, why I, I feel like maybe I was inspired to have you on today and why you were thinking about me and I text you. But um, so Rick and I have known each other for years and years. We were over mm -hmm. at Century 21 Everest. And you've been one of the greatest mentors to not just me but to just hundreds and hundreds of people that I know that have, that have been under your, your, your uh, stewardship as a leader, when you were a leader over there and you were the, uh, the, the managing broker over there yeah. and the, and everybody feels the same way. Like when somebody mentions your name, mm -hmm. they instantly get an emotional <laughs> feeling <laughs> for you and they have this absolute love for you. And I think the reason I bring that up is uh, I want our listeners to know um, why how important it is to have you on. You know, th th for me, I mean, you're the type of guy that you you'll teach us the most valuable principles to make us millions and millions of dollars in real estate like you've done for yourself. But you'll also be the guy 
that I can come over to your house on a Saturday afternoon and we can wrench on my car in your shop. Yes, sir, you know? which we've done. That was which we, <laughs> which we have done, yeah, a couple you, of times. You're too kind, Delma. But I, I appreciate you because oftentimes people, people um, as they get successful or they grow in business or whatnot, they change some of those things that cause them to have such a high connection. And for decades in real estate and in business in general, you've been someone who has stayed steady and consistent in maintaining high level relationships for just decades with people. So thank you for yeah, being here. You, bet. you mean a ton to me. Love you. Here's a little, <laughs> yeah, <I love laughs> that. little blow horn for you, dude. And, uh, but yeah, so continue. So we were talking about, the, about how serving others is so critical. Yes. You, you know, it's, it's fascinating. You're talking about some things. So many people have asked me, why haven't you stayed in just the production sell side of, of doing it, and 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 I'll try not to get, I'm already getting emotional thinking about it <laughs> a little bit, and I hate doing that because you know we're, we're tough guys, we're not supposed you to cry, but, 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 but you know what? Yeah. No, and no, I think that's the thing I've discovered with myself, as I guess I am emotional because I love people. I'm a people lover. Yes, you and are. there's a real simple answer. So long ago, um, way back in the '60s, my older sister was um, molested by a a guy down the street, and um, she spent the rest of her life getting into drugs and alcohol, and I couldn't save her. Um, she died in my arms. Tough, tough stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, I felt guilty because I couldn't save her. It was a powerful thing, and... One day I was at the office, and we were listening to Chris Voss and one of his presentations to our office. And he comes up and he says to this gentleman in the store, what is it about you that makes this counter so wet, so good? And immediately I went, what a powerful question. Or our buddy Russ goes, what a dumb question. <laughs> and I right. goes, no, that's powerful. So we ended up debating it. And... He he came into my office later that day, and I go, let's let's run it. Let's use it, because we're totally big into coaching each other and figuring out what's the next best move. Right. But I, 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 he comes in, and he goes, what is it about you that makes you care about the agent so much? And I went, wow, I don't know. Because you're never right. <laughs> I was coming in at five o'clock and right. leave at seven o'clock at night, and I yeah. would like like a machine, right? Dude, I would try to roll up and beat your Jeep there, yeah. <laughs> or your car, or whatever yeah, you sure. drive that day. And I, I would roll up, and I'm like, oh, he's already here. He's so like, <laughs> 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 like you're at the office when most people yeah. are waking up, or most people are are you know going to the yeah. gym. You know, you're at the office. Yeah. yeah, consistency is your greatest tool, right? Yes. No matter what you do, whether you're yes. pumping iron or or waxing cars. Right. It definitely. doesn't matter. It's it's consistency is the greatest tool for so for me I knew I had to get in early it's to your, get started. It, it, it's it's your greatest tool, yes. right? Yes. Out of, out of without, all the tools, question. all the skills you may learn, it, you can have all this stuff and mm -hmm. but consistency is actually the greatest of them all. Yeah. So look, discovering your why as we have talked about for years Alma, you and mm -hmm. I is one of the most powerful things you can do, right? Yes. So I knew there was a why behind me. I didn't know the power of what it was. And it was fascinating to me because I truly didn't know. So when Russ came in and he goes, okay, why do you care about the agent so much? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, close the door and I want you to get in my face with it. Right. So he pushes his hands down on the table and he goes, all right. And this is Russ Orchard? Yeah, Ru <laughs> which, right? Right. I mean, calm, calm, calm relax, relax. Yeah, chill, Russ. Yeah, I said, dude, no, really get in it and let me feel the emotion. Because sometimes we have to crack the shell yeah. on those we're trying to help, right? Yes. So this was a perfect thing and we got to choose it. And so he slammed his hands on the table and he goes, all right, Rick, why do you care about the agent so much? <laughs> And I went, whoa. And I tried not to get emotional, but I'm sorry. And my sister popped up. And I went, there it is. 
so what is it about you that makes you care about these people? And he goes, gosh, I guess it was a good question. That was a great question. And I said, well, he goes, I guess you found your, your why. And I said, I just did. I didn't know it was there, but it's what's driving me. And her great care for me, uh, and I couldn't save her, somehow I transformed that great care for the agents. But to sit there and have a grown man sit in your office and cry because he feels like he can't support his family. Right. You know, I think the listeners need to understand one thing. Your realtor, for the most part in the industry, are hardworking people. Yes. They love you as clientele. They love you as people. They're, they're doing the best that they can. They're doing they the best. That, that's right? it. That's it. So knowing that as a root to my whys is improving the agent. I could improve the deal. I could improve mankind, and I can affect more people. Because look, when I meet my maker, I want him to go, job well done, because I'm serving another human being. Because if I serve another human being, show them how to be more productive, better for their client. Yeah. Look, the product of a job give well him, done... You give me goosebumps, man. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the product of a job well done is a commission earned, right? Right. So that comes later. It's, but the, you, na it's the natural response to... It's the natural response. Care. And people automatically go to commissions, give me the best commission. No, no, it's about doing the right thing. It's about making the transaction better. We're talking about human lives, right. people's hopes, dreams, visions about what they're doing. Families. Families. Dental work. Dental. You buy, name Buying the next bag of groceries. That's it. Paying the next bill. Yeah. That's the very core of the emotion inside of people of home life. And look, that's the retreat for 99% of the people out there. There are a few that's like, I don't even want to go home tonight. Tell me that. Tell me this. Others. With that being said, like when we're talking about whys like this, like yes. that's the retreat. That's where people, 99% of the people are going back to is it's to take care of their family. Let's talk about whys for a second. Do, do, does your why change from time yes, to time? without question. Look, why, my why in the beginning when I get into real estate, now, you know, you got to look at my past. Mm -hmm. My past is... Because I feel like some people get stuck on their why. 100%. Like, oh, my why is this, and then they stay there for 10 years, and they're like, oh, yes. I'm not really interested in my why anymore, but that's my why. I need to hold on to it, but it's okay to let go of a why and well, go to a next one, right? That is, because so many people get caught up in the emotion rather than the logic, which creates emotion. Right. So if we get stuck in this river of ideologies based on where I'm going... You get stuck into maybe what the herd mentality is, is I'm going this direction. Right. This is where I'm at. And it's one of the reasons I changed from Everest right now is, you know, you buy into the Kool-Aid. You make sure you're doing everything you're supposed to. Yes. But Russ and I have always stated if 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 there was a a better place to be, I'd be there. Yeah, I'm right. not necessarily saying that where I went is better, but in so many ways it is. And it's different, It's right? different. It's, it's, and it gives you a different why, or it gives you a different perspective, a different environment. Well, well, right? it's, a, it's a totally different river with different rapids right, right. doing the same journey. Now think about that. So here in my 59 years uh, and, and being in this business 33 years, my top year was 108 units, I sold a lot. That's a lot of freaking That's houses. a ton of stuff for just one guy, but I had good people around me. That's not obtainable by your own. Just right. know this, in a canoe, you have it, it's better to have more than one person paddling. Right. So it, it, it's about looking and stepping back. Einstein did develop the theory of relativity by doing third position evaluation. And this is a good thing for all families, if you think about it. So... Einstein actually developed in MC square. It, it, it was actually looking at himself in a... Well, actually, he envisioned himself shooting across the universe on a beam of light. Okay. And then he... he God was such a visionary. Yeah, man. yeah. And then he envisioned himself outside of that, watch, looking at him shooting across the universe in a beam of light. And so he looked at it from three positioning. So... What I mean by that, as you bring it into any Speaking business, of which, there's a whole other camera out there. Oh, about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Same thing, right? Uh -huh. Third position and reviewing, because it gives you different angles, different emotions. Right. But here's the crazy thing. You become a better negotiator if you have like 
let's say there's three people sitting in a group trying to figure something out, and they're all trying to get to a, a common common point. Mm-hmm. What you have to do is actually, first off, look at the and evaluate the, the circle, and what does that mean to you what you're doing? Now you have to step out of your position, and Alma, I got to come into your position and go, what does it mean for Alma in his position? Right. What does it mean for Bob who's sitting next to us? How does it look to him? What is he looking to get? And here's one of the greatest of all. Now you have to step outside of the circle. Look at yourself. Look at the three individuals. And you have to quantify, really, what does it mean? So there's been a lot of... That makes so much sense. And and going into that kind of thought process, Jennifer and I were talking the other day, and my daughter, she was having kind of some kind of some self vision or self view issues. Sure. Right? She's like, I don't really like myself and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So Jennifer takes her into this um, kind of meditation and she goes and brings her in and, and sits her down. And she says, think about yourself when you were a little baby mm-hmm. and think about you holding yourself mm-hmm. as a little baby. How do you feel about mm-hmm. that little baby? Brilliant. And, and Jennifer's like, and, and, uh, Catriona, my daughter, she was like, oh, I, I love that little baby, you know? Mm-hmm. And she said, and, and as she gets older, how, you know, she's two years old now. How do you feel about that little baby? I love her. She's so beautiful. Her hair. And they started talking about the growth of this baby. And Jennifer takes her through this kind of meditation. You know, Jennifer's a wellness coach. And so yeah, sure. she's guiding her through these emotional, you know, growth patterns. And she gets her all the way up to her current age, which is 12 years old. And she says, now tell me how you feel about that baby. Do you still love that little girl? Wow. And do you still love that person? And do you still care for them and view them as a special, sweet soul? And Catriona was like, yeah, I love me. Oh, my I gosh. love me. And just, <laughs> I was like, yes. Oh, my gosh. She's telling me about this. And I'm just, I'm like, that is amazing. You're a genius. Like being that able is to genius. take her outside of her own mind and see herself the way we see her, yes. you know, and probably the way, you know, Einstein saw his perspectives from of relativity. And well, it, it, that's so valuable. She's brilliant in doing that because here's the truth. So for the last probably 25 years, I've self-studied psychology. Most of our defeating beliefs or stories is made from childhood. And we carry them. So when you talk about changing your why, you almost have to strip away and look, what does it really mean to me? But you got to go deep and find out what are your cognitive biases. Here's, and, and there's a lot of other things you can really do. This is a fascinating one that I think every person I train or, or I'm a good friend with or I believe I need to take to that next, next level, this is a, a technique I'll teach them that really changes your life. And you need to start asking yourself, how am I showing up in somebody's life? And uh, and then ask, how are they showing up in your life to make you respond? But how are they showing in your, up in your life to make you respond the way you do? So it's you have to be really aware of that because how you show up matters. And I, it was really relevant to me. I, was, I think more people need to to hear that. Yes. You know, I, Jennifer and I were talking the other day about that. Like, man, I, we were talking about specific friends and family members yeah. that we have. And yep. we're like, man, I feel like we really show up for them, but man, we never get the invites Boom. to the birthday party. We don't get the yeah. invite to the baptism. We don't get the invite to the whatever. And, but, but they're always invited to our stuff. And I'm like, I feel like we're like trying to show up for them, but they're not trying to show up for us. And that and, hurts. And it hurts. Yeah. And I, and I wish that they would hear this and go, oh, Maybe we need to step well, that up a little bit. But- Al, yeah, Alma, all of our listeners need to hear that very clearly, is why, you know, how are you showing up for your wife? How are you showing up for your husband? How are you showing up for your kids? And think about when you walk in the room, how are they responding? Look, it gives clues. Yeah. And how are they showing up and how are you reacting? Success leaves clues. Right? That's it. In relationships, in business, across well, the Well, let's see, right? and that's why I improve my agents is saying, look, ask, your que- ask the question how you're showing up. Because, look, they're looking at you as the expert, and if mm-hmm. you don't show up as the expert, or maybe they're looking at you as just a blood-sucking leech, which I've been called, <laughs> you know, knocking on somebody's door, and it's okay. You've been called look, that many times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no question. So here's what I can, here, here's one of the rules that I actually use in my life. Be more curious, 
less judgmental. Know that probably 50 to 60% of all people are going through the worst time of their life. So be kind. Look, and if you show up, I remember one time this gentleman coming into my office and I'm not going to give any names because it's pretty personal. Oh, tell us his name. No, I'm just kidding. Well, you know, <laughs> no, the, the, the crazy thing is, is he was actually clearing his desk out. Mm. To leave the, the, the business? No, leave this life. Oh, geez. So was going to actually commit suicide in the parking lot, but didn't want anybody to have to go through his stuff and pull his stuff out. Holy shit. That, that, that's, wow. Guys, that's how some of these realtors feel when they're not making it work for you. It's very personal. It's very emotional because they work super hard, as you know. I mean, after 33 years of doing this, just know that these are human beings too, just trying to do their best job. And, you know, I think society has lost the edge of being just kind Right. And is really out there wanting to know. And I'm not saying everybody's bad or everybody does that. I'm just saying my experience has been there's been a big shift. And and you, you don't know what people are going through. You right? don't. And that's why, like, and I was talking to Jennifer and I said, and this just kind of came to me. It wasn't like this knowledge I already had, already had in my mind. Yeah. I said, sweetheart, I know it hurts when people don't invite us back. Yeah. Or that they're not you know, inject interjecting themselves into our lives the way that we wish they would or that we do for them. But I said, not everyone will lead out. Perfectly said. So many people just don't know where they're at because of the noise. Sometimes we have to just turn off everything and listen and think. I, that's why I'm always asking myself now, you're such a rule of engagement. I call them rules of engagement. So my rules of engagement is no matter who it is, to the newest agent, to the oldest agent, to a brand new a person, a neighbor, a person at the gas station, a person at the McDonald's window when I'm hungry. How am I acting in their presence? Look, the words we say have power, and it's a reflection, and they will... Look, assumptions determine behavior, and behavior determines assumption. It's a Mobius Lou. The only thing you can change is how you respond to something. But if somebody's responding really badly because you showed up, it may not have anything to do with you. They're deep in emotion. They're swirling around their head. They can't even think straight. That's, you know, I changed my mind when I first started using these techniques as road rage. I was super, super bad. <laughs> I think you know, we've all had seasons of yes. bad road rage. Yes. Oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> just getting on and, you know, taking the position, you're trying to hurt my family. You're trying to destroy my car or my truck. You're, <laughs> right. you're, and, and, and so mm -hmm. what, what really changed me, I was showing up very bad. And then I watched my son reflecting me and I went, Oh, smoke snap. This is not good. Yeah. And so I, I saw, decided to start thinking. And it's the story. Listen to my story. You're going to hurt my family. You're going to wreck my vehicle. What's wrong with you? You know how arrogant that actually is to think it's even about you? I've shared this story before in that same context. Do you remember the 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 Troy Critchfield story? Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. And Troy comes up to this car, and it's a, it's a stoplight. It's right outside of our old office out there. And he pulls up in this car in front of us like, is stopped, not not in front of us. I wasn't there, but I feel like I was because I visualized this so many sure. times. Yeah, and he gets up, and there's a couple other people that we know in the car with him, and he goes, "Oh, that's weird. This car's not moving." You know, everybody around this car mm. is laying on the horn and flipping Sit. the bird, and they're loud mm. and they're obnoxious. And Troy goes, "That doesn't it just doesn't seem right. I wonder what's going on." And he's parks, probably puts his car in park, gets out of the car, walks over and checks, and the person is having some sort of Episode, medical medical yeah. episode yes and he's able to call 911 pull that person out and or, or help that person and get and save that person's wow. life incredible i remember the story do you remember that and it's, it's fascinating it's like how many of us would just be like oh right. man f you get out of my way bang, bang, bang. Yep. you moron you know whatever yep. just because we have all this you know maybe sometimes trivial bs that we're trying to get through that day yeah. to get to the next place or the next lunch appointment or whatever the hell it was and Troy took a moment and went, 
Wait a minute. Somebody needs help. Maybe. Yeah, wait a minute. What's going on? He's inquisitive. What's happening? That doesn't seem right. What's happening? Huh. Be more curious, less judgmental, yes. right? Yes, yes. So same thing. I mean, you know, my road rage was out of control, and it was affecting my family more than if somebody would have hit me, right? Right. right. But my arrogance made me believe it's about me. It's my vehicles, my family, blah, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. When I stopped one day and somebody cut me off really bad, and the, I said, wow, they must be going to their child's bedside who's dying or, um, you know, whatever the case may be. Wow, that, ch- that changed the perspective, huh? 100. <laughs> well, you should have seen the look on my wife and my kids' face. It's like... Dad's not raging, <laughs> you know, because I was a rageaholic, right? <laughs> right. And I come out of the ring fighting and ready to, you know, squash and mash. And uh-huh. and I changed, you know. I went from being the Hulk to, you know, leave it to Beaver, I How guess. How did that I don't, feel in that moment? When you... It was empowering like you can't believe because in that same day, here's what was happening further up the road. I had this other kid come racing up the side and he, you know, he cut me off and then I... Then he pulls off to the side, and he's uncontrollably crying. So my empathy... Same, came, same, same day? dude, yes. Same, same, same guy? Same guy. Really? And he's off the side of the road, and he was probably 18, 19. The reason he pulled over, he was sobbing so uncontrollably he couldn't drive no more. And the traffic was moving enough that I didn't get out, but what it did was so powerful, changed me. And to this day... When you you saw him crying. Yes, because the empathy kicked in. I'm like, what is he going through? And it made it real, right? Right, right. It had nothing to do with me. He doesn't know me. What arrogant was it that I even thought that he was trying to do something to me? Well, it's like like what you said, you know, 50 to 60% of the time, anybody that you come across in life at any given time, they're either currently in are going into, currently in, or coming out of potentially one of the worst traumas of their life That's or most, one of the most difficult times in their life. Well, so, you know, as we teach our agents to the many reasons why people sell their home, right, we have to be more curious, less judgmental. And the greatest question you can ever ask in a listing presentation or a buyer presentation, share with me, what are you ultimately trying to accomplish Right. And then shut up. Yeah. Because they will give you all the answers to the test. They will give you the reason of why. And it links to all of these. If you're a good listener and you understand your objections, look, we already know what all the objections are, why, why they're doing what they're doing. Or, right. And it's like, we just give a solution. We're problem solvers. But here, we're here to serve. We're here to change the life of the individuals, of people that are around us. But I thought I was going to get rich. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, here, here's what's crazy. So many good things can come from it. Part of it is, is yeah, you, you can make enough money to go buy up some rental properties and, and really create a really amazing life. Yeah. Real estate, though, guys, I'm telling you, is hard. Right, Alma? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's a br- it's, 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 it's like, br- it's like brutal. It's sim- like simple concepts, but you actually have to do the work, and that's the tough part, right? <laughs> 90% percent of people get into it because they love to show homes. Yeah. They like people. Yeah. And then they end up hating people. I really love draperies. Yes. <laughs> I like looking at homes. They have no clue what goes into this business. Yeah. And so it's you know, much deeper. You know, over the 33s of using this, I've I've created some some really good stuff in training agents in how to really listen to understand. And if you're listening to understand the sellers or the buyers will give you the answers to the test. Tony Robbins says business is a spiritual game. 100%. And, and it's really exciting just to be connected with human life in a way that I'm exposed to every type, personality type that's possibly even out there. Right. But, you know, it, it, it's crazy because it does take a unique individual to be able to be willing to get up every day, go to work, at the hopes to get paid. Right. And and no that's guarantee. what we do. No guarantee. Yeah, right. And man, I've done that for a very long time, worked as hard as anybody. I've been spit on, you know, blood sucking, you name it. Right. And, and and look, I from there, if I was them, I would feel the same way, right? For sure. I, yeah. I can't judge what they're going through or why. I yeah. can just fascinate. You may and that's such a critical aspect. Like you may not be them. You may not feel that way right now. Right. But if you were them, you might feel you, that th- way. Th- th- that's you the probably point. would feel that way. Yeah. That's why I think that 
we as realtors have to really say, you know, how am I showing up? Because if you show up, look, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care, right? Right. And and so when you show up and share with me ultimately what you're trying to accomplish, that one powerful question opens the doors to the why. So let's say that one more time. So they don't know how much you care till they tell it till they know how much you they don't care how much you know. Till they know how much you care. I love that statement. They well, don't you have, care you, how much you know until they know how much you care. That's it. Because, look, I've always taught that if I teach you how to do a script really well, and you're an ass, <laughs> now you're a scripted ass. Now you're a scripted ass. <laughs> so, so it, you, you know, if you look at UCLA, they did the study back in the 70s, right? So funny well, well, but it's true, right? It's so true. How many times have you heard somebody say a mm-hmm. script and you go, no, well, that's yeah. what you said. Yeah. Well, that's not how I done it. It's exactly how you did it. I remember, it. I, remember I, was, <laughs> I remember I was teaching this guy my script one time, yeah. and uh, he's on the other side. He was over at C21, and he's on the other side, and he's doing the script, and he was an ass on the phone. Like, yes. he, you know, typically he was just kind of an ass to just people. Just kind of an and, ass. And and I teach him this script and I'm like, okay, now this is how you act. This is how you got to be. And this is how you got to treat people and stuff. And he, he had the hardest time breaking through. And so he takes my script and he has all these nice things to say in the script. And he says it like an ass. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> isn't, isn't that incredible? Because I used to say like, it, like you know, it's more of what you say than how you say it. And I'm like, no, it's not actually true. Like it's more, it's the say, it's like how you say it and what you say. And yeah. like you said, if you have a if you have a great script, you just have a great script, and you're just a scripted well, ass. Well, the, I love it. Yeah, yeah, so, so the beauty is, is if you went to your significant other and went, "I love you," <laughs> or "I love you." Same words, uh-huh. but your your pitch and your tone gives a whole different uh, direction. Oh, I love you. Mm. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and once you put uh, pitch and tone in it and that add body language, it creates emotion, right? Right, yes. So is your... Is and your, connection. And connection. And significance. Significance. It's all of those things. So the beauty is that if you're going after your clientele and you're having a rough day... Yeah. You know, you're going to influence or melt into your communication the very depth of what your emotion is, and it changes the outcome. Let me ask you this. I've been teaching this recently. I learned it from Tony Robbins. I want Mm -hmm. to know what you think of it. The statement is, teach you or treat your, um, give, give love to your spouse the same and with the same, love your spouse with the same intensity that you love your children. Love Ooh. your clients with the same intensity that you love your siblings. Ooh, love that completely. I've heard that yeah. from Tony Robbins, and I think yeah. so. So here's the thing: it's you and I went to Tony Robbins, right? Yes. Was that our first? That was our first. That was time. our first time. Both dude. Me New and York. York. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What a trip. Wasn't that fun? That was amazing. <laughs> that guy is just brilliant. We were in this little ghetto. Little ghetto. Little what? ghetto apartment over in Jersey. We yes. went across the river to get to the stadium. But and wasn't that amazing? Yeah, it was so Just the whole great. experience, right? Yeah. So you look at what Tony Robbins is doing. He's, he's really getting into the sector of why that's into our subconscious. And look, 90% of who we are is in the subconscious. Right. So the sector where our kids are and our wife exists, the emotion behind that certainly is in that sector of, of the way we show up. That's getting right back to what I said earlier, yeah. how you show up matters. And people, people go, well, I don't want to love my clients. I want to do business with them. But in reality, you've got to show them love in order to really well, get into what they need. Right? Here's what I can tell you for me. You're right, Alma, 100% right. I want to love them. Yeah. I don't care who they are. I don't care what stage you're on in life. I don't care. I want to lo- I don't have to love what they do, right? Or what they believe. Or what they believe. Or what, yeah. I don't. Or what I'll, they wear. That's it. Or their their type of life they lead. That, that's right? it. I don't I, that, that's them. That's between them and whoever they believe their creator is. Right. What I want to do is to love the human inside. Right. Because I love people. I'm love a people lover. In, because love is an action word, right? It's love an is intention, the, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. And love is the most powerful thing in the universe, is what I believe. That if you tap around that, no, I can love individuals. That's what changed me. Love changed me. And so as I develop agents and I help clientele, I have to realize love is the key. 
And some people are pretty hard to love. Let's face it. Right. I've been a yeah. I've been a pretty hard guy to love sometimes. Not in my existence, but maybe yeah. before. <laughs> well, you know, and I have a, you know, I have a few family members that <laughs> they've been er- introduced to, to to prick Rick, <laughs> prick Rick. <laughs> so it's just because I have no tolerance for stupidity. And let me ask you this: on that same level, like when you talk about, um, oh, well, let me ask a question first. Oftentimes, we see, and I've experienced this in the past. I like to say that I don't feel this way now, but the the type of love that we have for our children that is unending, it's forever, it's um, it's unbridled, intentional love for our mm-hmm. children. Sometimes we don't treat our spouse with that same intensity of that is right love. We put them in a different category. You being married successfully for so long, how many? Thirty nine years. It's gonna 30? be. It's gonna be June. Is gonna be forty. Years. 40 same woman. years, same woman, beautiful, amazing, beautiful woman, amazing woman. I am a lucky man. I, I just think she might be blind or something. She is. She's very <laughs> blind. She can't, she can't see. She don't hear. No, like, I don't get it. <laughs> there are secrets like, right? I mean, look, there was one time I was a very he- hard person to live with because I was of this mindset of being, get up, get your day going and, and accomplish something. And I, I'm really grateful that part of me, mm-hmm. but I left a lot of bodies in my wake oh, gotcha. because I just wasn't ready. And But I, I honestly, about 25 years ago, had to really change because I wasn't happy with the way I was feeling. Right. And so I started uh, diving into psychology for my own health, right? And the things that I discovered, so, and then I started teaching some relationship classes and Mm -hmm. doing some things that was really powerful and people watching it change their lives. And that's really when I decided to go into management and start doing the management thing. And that even changed me even further. But you're right. But I feel like it was a calling because you've you've been a legend in real estate for so many years. Thank you. Everybody knows you. Yeah. And you were like, I'm going to go get into management. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. the only reason Rick would ever do that was because it was intentionally a calling. Yes. Oh, I say that all the time. I think we end up in places, first off, like here today. Right. I think the energy and the universe called on us to say, hey, there's some good things we need to talk about. This is the right time. I cleared your schedule. Right. You know, yeah, just, how the just happened is. to work perfectly. It, it, it did. Yeah. You weren't down at Europe, yes. not managing your other office up north. Correct. Yeah. So here's what I can tell you, and here's what I know because I've done studies on it, is that our wives are in tune with the energy in the universe of how and what we're thinking about and what we're doing. So it's fascinating we're even talking about this because today I'm way, on my way uh, back from North Salt Lake getting a, a an addendum picked up, uh-huh. I thought, oh, my gosh, I haven't texted her today. So I text her, hey, just thinking about you, love you. One day I did that, she texts me back and says, you have no idea how I needed that today. And I look at it and I went, God, why am I not doing this all the time? Look, it, it, there was a story told to me once where this guy came came home and he was in deep in thought and he wasn't thinking about, you know, anything else but, you know, what he was going through. And his wife looks at him and goes, oh, my gosh, he's thinking about another woman. <laughs> and he's thinking and she's going, honey, are you okay? You ready to eat? <laughs> no, I'm not hungry. And he's just sitting there and his head's down and he's thinking – Next day it goes by and he's, oh my gosh, she's having an affair on me. <laughs> and then it starts going further and further. She's now not sleeping at night, spiraling out of control. And there's a book called Downward Spiral that actually tells you all of these things. And again, it's how we're showing up. This is why this is so important and how we show up. Because she ends up bawling. And he goes, what in the world is wrong? (laughs) You're going to leave me. You're having an affair. And he goes, what in the hell are you talking about? (laughs) And she goes, you're having an affair. And he goes, why do you say that? Well, you're not talking to me. You're not answering. You're short with me. You're you're not present. He says, my Harley won't start. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, ladies, be patient. I'm just trying to figure out the problem. Right. I'm running it through my head. Well, and when it really <laughs> sunk into me, I had my niece live, come live with me t- uh, 10 years ago. Uh-huh. Beautiful girl. And we're really close. And I walked in one day, and she goes, Uncle Rick. And I says, what? She goes, are you happy? And I said, yeah. She goes, notify your face. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. Oh, yeah. Do Smart. I look? Yeah. Do I? Well, I, she gets me, right? right. I, uh-huh. I'm always coaching her on things. Right. She hates to debate with me, but <laughs> because I'm constantly asking questions to take her down this line. It, 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 it's just when you're feeling bad, ask questions. And look, we get, we fall into the law of familiarity. Right. And, you know, we come home, we kick our shoes off, watch the news, get something to eat, hi, honey, kiss, you know, a little peck on the cheek, whatever. Wait, so, so when we talk about consistency being our greatest tool, we're not talking about this, right? <laughs> right. Do, doing the same mundane no, thing no, no, over no, and over no, again. Yeah, because the reality is it becomes the law of familiarity uh, uh, actually ends up really being an enemy at one time or another because of that. Right. But it's, it's us moving away from the campfire, right? Right. We want to keep that fire burning. Yes. So if you're not, ladies and guys, <laughs> listen, text your loved one, hey, just thinking about you. How do you feel about it when somebody says, hey, just thinking about you? It, it's different than I love you, right? The, this. The mundane I love you, right? Well, saying, They know they love you, you love them, but if you say things like, and you switch it up a little bit, and you text them things like, I'm yes, thinking about I'm thinking you. Of, I miss you, things like that. Well, I'm think. look, here's one of the greatest things you can ever do. I'm thinking about you. Even when I'm calling up a client I haven't talked in a long time, mm-hmm. and when I teach my agents, one of the greatest things you can ever do is, is call up and say, hey, Alma, Rick Bentley, man, I was doing my, my business calls, and I got thinking about you, buddy. How are you? Yeah. And then you go into, hey, man, you know, well, how's family, how's the kids, you know, Pleasantries, right? God, you know, you know, I'm in real estate, so I just want to really let you know about the cool things going on in real estate right now. Let me ask you a question: How are you building wealth in real estate? Well, you're not going to leave, and I'm not. Or I'm look. Why aren't you buying something? It's insurable, rentable, tangible. Is your stocks and bonds that something that increases in value? Increases in value. The best. Well, and the best part, yeah, yeah. best part. Somebody else pays it down for you. And if you want a real raise, get into a rental property that you can actually write off as a tax write-off. Yeah. yeah. But look, even when you're going to the doorstep of an individual, are you going to boy out of here in a pine box? <laughs> so the direction you should be going with that, and this is gold, and I probably shouldn't be saying it online because it is powerful, <laughs> and I've made, I've made people millions off this one. I simply go, oh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, let's not let that happen too soon. Well, let me ask you, do you have kids and grandkids? Yeah, kids are all grown and moved out. I got grandkids. Right. Well, you, you love the grandkids, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, what's real estate going to be like when they're ready to buy? Right. Well, it's not going to be even in sight. They won't I even be know. able to buy one. They I won't buy even now. be able to buy one. So let me ask you a question. If you <clears throat> could actually buy a property right now, get some residual money coming and create a tax shelter for you, and be able to will that to your grandchild after it's close to being paid off. Who's the hero now? Grandpa. <laughs> grandpa. And grandma. You can be the hero, grandpa. The hero. <laughs> so, and now you, it's crazy how many people don't even think about that. Right. But I get agents who make millions off that because all they're doing is really describing reality. Mm-hmm. Because if a grandma and grandpa or somebody can actually capture that uh, it, it, it's a powerful place to be. And look, somebody else plays, pays that pays for the gift you're handing to the kids. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? Right. It's about leaving a legacy, and they want to be remembered. And frankly, when they get to that certain age, they really don't care about the wealth they have, but what they can leave other people. You know what you are? You're a practical psychologist. Yes. <laughs> Great way to put it, because I always talk about going into logic, Dr. Logic, right? right? Let's turn on Dr. Logic, and let's really talk about what's real. Because so, it's like it's like all the experience you have, all the life experience, the great marriage, the, yes. the, the, time you, the, the times you've effed up in yeah. your life, and you've come back and you've, you've you know... And I think that's why so many people are always knocking on your door, coming in, visiting you, sitting on your couch, because 
it's you have taken this this step of doing better the next day. Yeah. And you've kind of created this, you know, Tony Robbins calls himself a practical psychologist. Yes, and I'm like I agree. I feel like you are as well with all the experience you've had and the, the time that you've spent with people and the the and I think that's why everybody's so drawn to your couch. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. You know, I had the couch there, and, and people would come in and say, "Can I, can I, can I lay down for or, a second? Or line up on your door. I remember line up the door. I remember lining up. There's, I walk up to talk to you, and there's, there's two other people outside your door waiting. They're like, "Oh, they're, he's in there with somebody else." I'm like, "This is, <laughs> this <laughs> is like a doctor's office. Like you're legit it, waiting to go it, sit on your couch." It was crazy. <laughs> that's why I had to come in at five o'clock, right? Right, right. and and leave at seven. Well, I was just giving you know solid advice that was simple. Yeah, and it's crazy how many of us as agents, and I have, I don't know, I got a lot to learn still, and I think as well, you're you're a never ending student. That's it too. That's it. You're always a student. I am always looking for something new, a new angle, because look, everybody brings a different view to the way they see the world. And, and you, you see things now differently than you did even even ten years ago. Right? Yeah. So so here's the point you made: Does our why change? Absolutely. Sometimes it changes immensely. Mine's remained pretty anchored in my sister, and it seems to be hard to shake, but you can have more than one why. That's just my core of about affecting people. Okay. You know, and my core is more than just real estate. And your why, and your why can be in your past, it can yes. be in your present, it can be in your future. Yes. Right? Yes. And and look, when you fulfilled a great why, another one takes its place. But sometimes it takes discovery. And it's usually deep in your subconscious. Is it but, just gonna come to you or do you gotta work for it? I, you know, I think you have to work for it. I think you have to write it out, journal it out, meditate it out. And and the beauty is is we, we I always hear like, oh, the right thing's gonna happen or no. Or don't worry, sweetheart. The right person will come along. You'll fall in love and you'll get married. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome. So we call that wishful thinking, wishful right? Thinking. <laughs> Look, life can be by design. You know, you know. I, I love the, the law of attraction. I love uh, the secret, mm -hmm. all of those. And, and they're real, but none of it really matters unless there's action. Look, you can hope and, 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 and hope for a pony. Mm-hmm. You know, but you'll never really get a pony unless you go find one. Right. So let's go I, work for one. It, unless it, you look, go and, yeah, yeah, it's your attitude. Look, I remember this story where this, you know, one kid was not a very good kid at home, and you know, it, you know, he's really kind of rowdy and out throwing rocks and mud and making the next door girl cry. And you know, his parents kept telling him, "You're not going to get anything for Christmas." <laughs> and unless you shape up and he says, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do better. And they're saying, Santa's watching, right? Uh -huh. This is why childhood really has so many deep seated emotional anchors. But so Christmas comes and his parents going to teach him a lesson. So they fill this little uh, box with horse poop <laughs> and he opens it up and he goes, yes, a pony. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our perspective on life, right? Sometimes, I got a pony. yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, crap's gonna show up, right? <laughs> but crap is the very thing that fertilizes us. Look, you'd never follow a general into battle who's never swung the sword, right? Why would I mean? So look, we hope that we have these obstacles. Think that we about have that, to work guys, through. when you're picking a presidential candidate. <laughs> That's the thing, right? I, mean, I miss all the pres yeah. the presidents of the past, the Kennedys, the Reagans right. that all served in the military or they were military leaders or yeah. something. Yeah. Anyways, we're not getting a political debate, but I'm just saying. 100%. It makes perfect sense. Well, it does. And I look, I think that you have to dig deep. Who are you? Right. Go look in the mirror and ask yourself, really? Because the person in the mirror, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. Man in the Mirror, the song, so powerful. <laughs> right, 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 and spot on. So you look at that. Look, our experiences is like the rudder on our boat mm -hmm. that we're taking down this, ri this river, right? And we can look so far ahead, but the river of life is, is really filled with opportunities to learn. I screwed that up. Ooh, that was a good lesson. And you move on. But if you waller in that of it's never look, here's what I here's what I know. You can either be a victim. The victim mentality is like cancer. If you have a victim mentality, it'll eat you alive. And you will never find the great reward in your life. And whatever that great reward is, is is so many different things. 
I mean, a beautiful wife or a beautiful husband, or, you know, a good job. But look, none of it is without massive rapids. Welcome to planet Earth. Look at your experience and go, what can I learn from this? But ask yourself, what pound of flesh do I have in this that I caused? Right. What did I do that actually had caused this thing? And own it. So you can either be a victim or a victor. Dr. Uh, uh, Victor Bachenko, uh, Man's Search for Happiness. Uh, Victor Frankl. 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 That's right. Frankl, yes. Reading his book, I recommend it highly because you look at him. He was stripped of everything, hair, you name it, all clothed, everything. Wife, kids killed, kept in a concentration camp, and he turned it into an experiment. Look, our lives are experiments. What are we to learn in the moment? What people can't take is their mind unless you let them. Yes. So I can look at, you know, oh my gosh, it's going to be rainy tomorrow. And I, uh, <laughs> or I can go, wow, we really need the rain. You know, so it's our ability to or look. Or you can say, oh man, it's flooding. Look, you can't do anything about the flooding. No. You can do something about the sandbags. That's you, it. You can go serve See? your neighbor. <laughs> serve yeah. your neighbor, take yeah. care. That's why I'm saying is everything we do in this world is to serve another human being. You know, ask yourself, how are you showing up? Because that's really a core rule of engagement. In your, in your kids' lives, in your neighbors' lives, yes. in your spouse's lives, yes. your family, your peers, right? You know what's sad, Alma? We show up in our family life sometimes worse. It's interesting to me. Sometimes we'll treat a perfect stranger kinder than we do our own family. I was talking to Justin Udy about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went to one of his um, classes, one of his trainings. Mm hmm and he said, I wanted to become better as a father. So I started spending more time with my kids. I started yes. taking them to school in the morning, started coming into work later, all these things. And he said, by doing that, it actually increased my quality of life and my love for myself and my life and my family. For sure. And he goes, even though I was coming into work later, getting into the office at 930 or whatever, he said, I actually started to increase my production because my morning and my connection with the reason why I was doing all this for my kids and my family and my future and my legacy got so valuable to me because I started putting that extra time in. He said, I ended up making a lot more money by coming a little bit later because I, I, I've prioritized those moments of being a great father. Well, it's about structure, right? Yeah. Um, you have to have balance. You have to have where things are important. Look, business will just happen if you're out doing what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And consistency, again, in that sector is your biggest tool. So it's right. It's showing up so that they're comfortable because you go and you have a clearer head. Look, mm -hmm. everything we go through uh, takes up real estate in our head. Right. And if you're allowing that to exist in your head and it's not giving you something back, like kids are happy, wife is happy, and it's never going to be 100% and we all have time, like right? We have like 60,000 thoughts a, a day or something. Well, in that's head. interesting. And so we need, we need to like make sure that when we're thinking about well, those things that it, they're... So in quantum physics, fascinating you're even <clears throat> saying this. In quantum physics around us, because I study some quantum physics too, because it's fascinating to me, is that in, our, in any given, any person's life, there's about... 450 billion bits of information around us, buzzing around us at all time. We're capable of only technically able to process maybe 2 million. But in that 2 million, the reticular activation system in which we function from as a human being, it doesn't matter which language, it, it actually sifts through that like a sifter. Based on your experiences and what your assumption or story is, is the filter that actually throws the rest out. And that's why some people repress memories and repress bad things. And then they come out in life and go, where was that for all these years? <laughs> right. Where did that come from? Because the that was clues, out of left field. Yeah, yeah, because clues now change. But your intelligence changed based on your what you're, what you're actually being exposed to. So... You know, as you look at your rule of engagement with human beings, 
be again back to be more curious, less judgmental, because you don't know what that person's life experience was, right. or what they just gone through. That look, there's what they call uh, triggers and antecedents that actually are in the subconscious, and those triggers and antecedents are really what they look like. The trigger is something that sets you off, the person that cut me off, but it actually played into my story. Right. Right. That story was. You know, you're trying to ruin my ruin my truck, my beautiful. I just washed it, right. polished it. Right. You and don't respect you me. You don't yeah. respect me. Can't you see this big, beautiful truck? I'm <laughs> like, I hate trucks. <laughs> so, yeah, and and frankly, it's it's just, but that's not what it does at all. Right. It was what's going on in their life. So, that, look, life is really complicated. But I, you know, uh, my big thing is is to slow down. You know, really ask yourself, what's the person in the car next to you going through? Right. What about the person serving, you know, your your your, your food, your meal, your yeah. meal? Look, look into their face. The person who's taking care of your room, taking room, care of room your room. Service, yes, yeah. I'm a big tipper. Yeah, I am too. I, I mean, I, I love, love tipping because I love service providers. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, and here's what I can tell you. This is a really powerful thing, and I learned this about ten years ago. The heart actually has a magnetic field around it. And some people call it an aura mm-hmm. or their presence and these kind of things. We can actually measure that. It's an electromagnetic field. And it's either negative or positive. I mean, you draw in crap or you can change it to positive. So that's about 12 feet around your body. So our heart fields somewhere along the way is touching right now. And, and, and sometimes it's so powerful, <laughs> women will actually heartbeats start beating the same together. And, and if you're close to your, your, your woman or your man, kind of watch it sometimes and see if it's beating together. So you can actually expand that meditation, push it out. Tony Robbins talks about, you know, when you ask an individual, tell me about your room when you're a child. Mm-hmm. Typically, you're looking <clears throat> up to the left, sometimes to the right, because we hold that picture in our mind. Right. So in this field, we have stuff enter into that field. And what happens? We let it lay on the floor and fester and right. eat at us. When we need to scoop that, push it outside of that field, so it's no longer affecting us. And if something comes flying in, it's bad. Catch it, throw it out. You're not allowing it into your life to hurt you or mess with your emotion because... How you show up matters. When are you writing your book? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you know, I, I've been asked that too. You've been too. a songwriter. You've done songwriter, country music. yeah, country music, uh, like Ring Fighter. You know, <laughs> Ring Fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just last week he uh, yeah. fought Tito Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, Tito, uh, me and old U- Tito. UFC. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. You know, it, it's it's something that I just digested a lot of books, and here's what I believe. None of this is my stuff. It's all uh, regurgitated. Right. And, from, and I don't think anybody, Tony Robbins or anybody. That's what he says, dude. He's it's like, not I, theirs. I learned all this shit from somebody else. And well, they but learned from somebody else. And, that's yeah. the point. But right. how much did we emotionally connect with? Right. And how much of that is, is in because it's important to you. And it all comes from your desire, your why. Because my desire is to better be a better human being. Um, cause there was a time I didn't like myself and it's only was cause it was a protection. I mean, and I had we, to fight I, my way. I think, there's, I think there's a lot of people that are kind of in that place where they're like, I don't really like myself. Yeah. But, but at, at some point you have to, you have to teach yourself to love yourself. You, right? you, I, well, uh, that's why you beautiful wife. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that story up because you can literally do that same with yourself. See yourself as a little boy or yeah. as a little girl. And I look at myself, and I was a, I was a cute little guy. I mean, I was fat, like squirrel cheeks. You're and, a cute guy right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, you're awesome. You know, I don't know how my married, my wife married this, but <laughs> I'm glad she's somewhat blind. Some of us married tens, and we yeah, were we yeah. were solid five or seven. Hey, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I ranked myself a good four. <laughs> Here, what's crazy is her. Once, ref- I, once I started loving myself, I'm like, I was, I'm a solid seven. Well, <laughs> I, I'm just glad you're with somebody long enough. It's you probably have heard this and seen this. Is uh, that if you're with somebody long enough, you start looking like him. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, there's hope. Oh, that, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. <laughs> and somebody, some people go, you two are a really good looking couple. Thanks. 
facts. But but what's funny is last time I took her out for dinner, mm-hmm. um, the guy goes, "Just you and your daughter." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> the guy's like, "Serious," looking at me, going, "He's always okay." So this yeah. is your niece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I goes work with it. <laughs> okay, hold on. Your baby sister. I'm going so, for that. <laughs> so I get the senior discount. She doesn't. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> She's older than me. Yeah. So you're telling me the business is of the heart. It's yes. caring for people. Caring for people, man. Where can people Love find people. Mr. Rick Bentley? Yes. You're Love online. people. You're on. You're on Facebook, right? Yes. yes. Rick Bentley. Yeah, you can go look me at Coldwell Banker Station Parks, Farmington. Nice. You know, it's a great place to be. You know, look, there's a lot of good realtors out there that love you, willing to be with you. You know, just ask ask for advice and just know that we as a realtor community trainer, we want to bless your lives. Yes. Thanks for another uh, watching for and listening to another episode of Closer Cult Podcast. Thank you, Mr. Rick Bentley. Thank you, sir. Love it. We'll see you guys next time.